Osio Nagad, Jennifer Lauren Dawado. Hello, everyone. I'm Jennifer Lauren, Cherokee Nation citizen and host of Osio Voices of the Cherokee People. Welcome to Chalagi, wherever we are. Today's show is all about music and Cherokee musicians, and lucky us, we will get to enjoy performances by several talented Cherokee musicians today. Some you may have heard of or seen before, and some who may be new to you. But all of them share our connection to the Cherokee Nation as citizens of our tribe. We'll start today's show with remarks from Principal Chief of the Cherokee Nation, Chuck Hoskin Jr. Then we'll show a clip highlighting the career and travels of Cherokee Nation citizen and opera singer, Barbara McAllister. After that, we'll enjoy performances from some more traditional Cherokee performers. Then we'll interview Ryan and Agala Sieg Mackey, who will talk with us about the evolution of music in the Cherokee Nation from pre-European contact to today. Next, we'll jam out to performances by contemporary Cherokee artists, and then we're joined by Tribal Counselor Candessa Teehee, and finally, Director of the Cherokee National Youth Choir, Mary Kay Henderson, will close out our program. And now it's my pleasure to introduce my friend and Principal Chief Chuck Hoskin Jr. for his remarks. Osio, I'm honored to join you today for another edition of Cherokee Wherever We Are. Today's topic is Cherokee music, and I believe it will be both educational and entertaining. The rich musical tradition of the Cherokee Nation is a fascinating history that spans centuries and continues to evolve every day. From ancient ceremonial music to today's modern fusion of traditional and contemporary sounds, Cherokee music reflects the cultural heritage and resilience of the Cherokee people. We know that throughout history, music has played a significant role in Cherokee society. Traditional songs were passed down through generations, serving as a means of storytelling, preserving history, and connecting with the spiritual world. Ceremonial music, like stomp dance songs, have been played during important gatherings throughout our history as a people. It fosters and carries our shared culture. With the arrival of European colonizers, Cherokees faced immense challenges and cultural disruption. Our perseverance was tested, yet we persisted. However, musical traditions always thrived in our communities and families, adapting to the ever-changing times. Additionally, the incorporation of European instruments, including fiddles, pianos, and guitars, helped transform traditional melodies to create a distinct blend of styles. Christian hymns were translated and sung in Cherokee, and they still are today. Our support of choral traditions has helped preserve our language over the generations, as well as traditional songs. The emergence of recorded Cherokee music allowed for wider dissemination and preservation of songs. Cherokee music evolves and embraces various genres and styles. This fusion of traditional and modern sounds helps maintain our cultural identity while appealing to a broader audience. Contemporary Cherokee musicians, several you will hear today, explore diverse musical genres, including country, folk, hip hop, and rock and roll. They use their music to address social issues, advocate for native rights, and express their unique experience as Cherokee. Our tribal government actively supports and promotes music through programs like the Cherokee National Youth Choir and the Cherokee National Treasures Program. These initiatives develop young talent, encourage cultural preservation, and provide a platform for performances. Today's in-studio collaboration is an exploration of the musical traditions of the Cherokee Nation, one that embraces both the past and the present. Friends, Cherokee music continues to be a vital part of our cultural fabric. And I hope you enjoy this celebration of our heritage and creativity as much as I do. Wado. Wado Chief, mm -hmm. thank you for joining us over here. Gonna ask a few questions about Cherokee music and musical traditions. So starting off, um, you mentioned earlier that the tribe continues to support music programs like the Cherokee Youth Choir and Cherokee Nation Treasures Program. Why is this important um, for your administration and for Cherokee Nation to continue supporting those programs? Well, we need to get behind the creativity of the Cherokee people. I think particularly young people. And the Cherokee Youth Choir, if you ever go see them perform, uh, the music is beautiful. It's in the Cherokee language, but you also know these are young Cherokees who have this creative spirit. They've got uh, a great future ahead of them, and this is one way we can get behind not only them, but the people 
the kids out there that are listening to them saying, I want to do that. They're, they're looking up to these middle school and high school kids, and these little kids are saying, I can do that too. I want to do it. Cherokee National Treasures Program is a way that we honor the best in Cherokee art, and some of that art is is in music. It really is across the spectrum of the creative arts. People think about uh, the great Tommy Wildcat, who plays beautiful flute music, plays on this show. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a way to share our culture with the world. And again, you're thinking about that generation coming up. What are they looking at? What are they understanding to be important? And I think we've got to send a message, particularly to young people, that this creativity is something that we value in Cherokee society, that it's useful, uh, that it can bring us joy. And if you listen to the youth choir, you listen to Tommy, you get a lot of joy. And of course, there's lots of examples of that going on across Cherokee Nation. Yeah. And I have to say, you know, just being at events where the Cherokee National Youth Choir is, you just, it seems like it does so much for them as individuals, young individuals, and, and you know, you know, learning the songs and the language and taking pride and all of that. It absolutely does. It do does all of that. It does, does instill a sense of pride in the participants. And if you're in the audience and you're Cherokee and you're hearing them sing, maybe the national anthem in Cherokee. You're hearing them sing Amazing Grace and getting everyone really centered for what we're there for at a particular event. You hear it in Cherokee, you may li be like me and you don't understand many of the words because you're still trying, but there's something that it touches uh, in your heart and that's important. Yeah. Um, so speaking of, you know, speaking of singing in the Cherokee language, can you tell us how music helps Cherokee language learners in, in your view? Well, it makes the language more accessible. I mean, people can think about it this way, no matter where you are in the world, or even if you're at home and you hear music, it might be in another language, you still can connect with it. You still sort of get it on some level about what the music is trying to convey. That's part of the beauty of using music as a way to inspire people to learn the language. And so I mentioned Amazing Grace a while ago. I've been in crowds where uh, a lot of folks don't understand Cherokee, but they hear Amazing Grace in Cherokee. They've heard it enough that they can say some of those words. And when you can relate the Cherokee version of a song that's sort of universally loved uh, with uh, your English understanding and your Cherokee understanding, it starts to make the language more accessible. It's also a way that we can reach a lot of people. Uh, we can reach particularly young people. And then that's why you see Cherokee Nation getting behind uh, both traditional ways of singing uh, and also contemporary styles. I think the more we do that, the more we signal to people that the language is important, that there's lots of ways to experience the language, that the language can be intimidating trying to learn it. But if you can learn it in the context of something that brings you joy, that sort of is universal, universally loved, and music is, uh, it makes it seem more possible to learn the Cherokee language. And we need all of the uh, ways to learn the language that we can bring to bear as possible if we're gonna succeed on this mission to save the Cherokee language. Music is really key to that. Yeah, great. Um, so if you know Amazing Grace, most people know the, you know the words to Amazing Grace in English, so that's a good place to start. Absolutely. Is to listen Absolutely. to it in Cherokee. Um, something new and exciting to talk about um, is the addition of a live music concert at Cherokee National Holiday this year. Can you talk about that? Well, Cherokee National Holiday, Labor Day weekend, it's my favorite time of the year. And there is so much to do. And you're right, we've got a, uh, a new event this year, which is live music. And so uh, I encourage people to come to Tahlequah for Cherokee National Holiday, Labor Day weekend. If they go to One Fire Field, they're going to experience really some exciting performances. Uh, uh, and I think it's going to be one of our most well-attended event across a weekend, Jen, in which 100,000 plus people descend on the capital city of Tahlequah. And so uh, people can find more uh, about this on our website, uh, but I encourage them to come out. It's going to be a great show. I think they'll be very excited about it. Yeah, I think people can bring blankets, you know, folding chairs, come right. and hang out and listen to music uh, along with everything else we do at Cherokee National Holiday. Absolutely. All right, Wado, Chief Hoskin, for all that you do to promote Cherokee culture and for taking some time to talk with us about how you all are supporting musicians across the reservation. Sure. Wado. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a look at the fascinating life and career of Cherokee opera singer Barbara McAllister. Take a look. I was born and raised in Muskogee, Oklahoma. I wanted to sing and I loved classical music, but I think I had heard it since I was born. I was told when I was young, I was too shy, too nervous. 
um, that I would never have a chance to be a singer. And I just, I, there was nothing that could stop me from pursuing singing. I wanted to sing and I wanted to pursue the art of singing. I didn't know you had to be on a stage. I would have been very comfortable being a radio performer. I studied music and already began doing summer stock theater, even though I was scared to be on stage. And I went to audition for the Dallas Summer Musicals. Uh, and I remember walking onto the stage um, and I announced my name and then they said, what are you singing? And I was so terrified I didn't remember what I was singing. So I had to ask the pianist, what am I singing? And then as I exited after singing, I tripped, of course, and I guess Sagittarius um, at work, and I got hired. I think probably because I stood out once I started acting, and then once you're in character, you become somebody else. And I, I, it makes it so much easier. It's the hardest singing anyone can possibly do. The operatic voice has to project over an orchestra, over a chorus, and that voice has to sail across all of that. That's the amazing thing about opera. Because you're engaged by the theater, you have time sometimes to travel. I would go to Italy, and then I would go to La Scala and work with uh, Reinaldo Zamboni. Hong Kong has a lovely performing arts center. I would say Carnegie Hall would be one of the greatest because of the acoustics. I studied with the best, to me, the best there are in the world. And I'm able to give that now to the students I work with, and that's such a joy to me. And it's amazing, really, that the Cherokee Nation is behind me in doing this. What an interesting life she has led. That clip was taken from Barbara's story off of OCO TV. And remember, you can watch her entire story and many more free of charge anytime at your convenience online at OCO.TV. Now I am pleased to welcome musical guest Mary Kay Henderson.
Thank you, Mary Kay. Now I'm pleased to welcome DJ McCarter and the Cherokee Baptist Choir. I'm DJ McCarter, a director of the Cherokee Indian Baptist Choir. And we're going to do a number for you. We call it Dedication of Children. about that. Uh, as we just saw, many esteemed and talented Cherokees continue to keep Cherokee musical traditions alive and well, and these traditions continue to inspire the next generation of Cherokees as well. Uh, so here to talk about traditional and contemporary Cherokee music is our father-son duo, Ryan and Agalasi Mackey. Welcome to the show. We're done. We're done. Yeah. Yo. Yes, you. We're glad you're here. And Ryan, you've been here a few times now um, to talk about various topics. It's always a pleasure to have you here. But I want to start today by talking with you about, um, you know, tell us a bit about the uh, Cherokee music traditions and, you know, how how that maybe started. How Where do we think of Cherokee music starting? Oh, I well, don't. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. You know, there's a lot I don't know, but I've had the honor and privilege of listening to folks tell some really amazing stories. And one of the interesting things that I recall when you asked me that question is, is um, we have this song where we'll sing it at the ceremonial grounds or stomp grounds. People will hold hands a lot of times and everybody will stop and they'll sing together and it sounds kind of like a hymn. And um, as far as I know, you know, we do share a lot of songs with other tribes, but as far as I know, we're the only ones that really claim that song. And I was asking elders about it, and they said that that song was our first prayer. That's what they called it, our first prayer. And so I asked them, does that mean that, you know, our first prayer was literally a song? And they said, yes. You know, over the years, I've got to ask some amazing elders really pertinent questions, and sometimes they answer me right away, but most of the time they'll give me weeks, sometimes years, before they, they reply. But one of the most interesting things that I've learned is that all of our songs um, that, that our ancestors used to do were about Thanksgiving. They were, they were prayer songs, 
the focus was to give thanks for what we have. And as long as we give thanks for what we have, we'll always be provided with what we need. So, so the very foundation of our spiritual tradition is, is music. Mm. Beautiful. Can you talk about also some of the ways that different types of music and over the years and the evolution of, you know, music that's been touched by Cherokee culture? Oh, I think that, you know, when we think about um, Americana, music that was originally, you know, indigenous to North America, um, it has had bearing on contemporary traditions. Folk music, um, potentially, but definitely blues and uh, possibly possibly jazz. I know it's something that um, Joy Harjo, the, the Creek poet, mm -hmm. has spoken about, the influence on Muscogee Creek music, on, on blues music. And although, you know, Cherokee songs and Muscogee Creek songs aren't exactly the same, they're very similar, and we come from a very similar tradition. Uh, our roots are in uh, the southeastern ceremonial <coughs> complex, which was associated with the mound builders. So all over the southeast, Mississippian mound builders had these huge temple mounds and large square grounds where we sang and we danced and we worshiped. And one of the primary types of music that came out of this tradition that was shared by all of us, uh, what we call the five civilized tribes, as well as folks like Shawnees and Uchis, and even as far north as the Six Nations, people sing stomp dance songs or something very similar to it. Um, call and response songs, and and those songs, according to you know what I was told by the old folks, as well as what some of these artists have talked about, uh, have influenced some of our you know Southern American music, be it blues, possibly jazz, maybe folk and country. We don't know for sure because you know they they didn't used to cite their sources, but but we do know that when we hear that sort of old timey music we recognize something in it. Is that true for you too? Yeah. <clears throat> I'd say, um, you know, the the songs that they started making, you know, a hundred years ago, um, I think had to have been somewhat influenced by the music that they heard when they came to America. And that would be our traditional songs, you know. I think, um, I think it just has to be tied together in some way, come from each other. I, you know, it's something I believe. Um, we, we know that, you know, for our Native people, music and dance is very important. It always has been. Things change through the years, you know. Folks kind of went towards the gospel side of things, and, and there's not as much dancing with that. But the music is still very strong. At our ceremonial grounds, a lot of times we do stomp dance songs, uh, call and response, and and I was, you know, raised around here and being told that those are our sacred songs. That's why you don't hear them a lot in public. When I went to North Carolina and got to know some of those folks about two decades ago, um, you know, they they pointed out that they knew those same songs, and we started sharing songs, and there were songs that we had heard about but had never never participated in that they knew, and vice versa. So it was almost like when we got to know them, these things were coming together. So we know it's our tradition. We hadn't hung out with them for 200 years. You get back together and we know the same songs. And so we know that they're things that our ancestors have always done. One of the interesting things is, is they told me that what they call stomp dance songs were mixed dances. And they used to move the furniture out of their houses and um, dance inside their house. And for them, you know, until more recently, um, they didn't have the ceremonial grounds. They, they had to start bringing those back with help from folks back here. And when they revived that, it became very ceremonial. But for a while, they kind of saw these mixed dances as almost the social side of their mm -hmm. traditional songs. They considered things like the eagle dance, other animal dances, the corn dance, special dances. Those to them were more sacred. And the social aspect was kind of represented by the stomp dance songs. Well, here in you know, Cherokee Nation, we, we've kind of set aside a lot of those special dances. And we really focus on the ceremonial songs, but those old special dances, they were seasonal. Um, they were appropriate to, you know, what was growing in the fields or the plants and animals we gathered from the forest. So that they were absolutely about acknowledging the natural world and what we procured from it. 
And even though, you know, modern songs that we're really proud to be associated with, I am certainly, um, aren't about that same subject matter, um, there's still that sense of joy. Mm -hmm. There's still that sense of thanksgiving. doesn't necessarily tie into the same themes that our ancestors' ceremonial music was associated with, but it, it, it still has a similar, for me, a spiritual feel to it. Yeah. Um, and Agala Sieg, you write and perform your own music, yeah. um, combining some of that, you know, that musical tradition from your family with your own modern twist. And and you guys are in for a treat. You're going to hear him perform here today um, after this. But I will say, um, just listening to you, I feel that joy. And <laughs> and I know the audiences I've been around have felt that joy. But can you talk a little bit about what inspires you to yeah. make music and your creative process? Yeah. So, um for me, my biggest inspiration is knowing that our culture and language has value. And that is a message that I've spent my whole life trying to get out there that, um, yeah, we might be living in the middle of nowhere in Oklahoma, but we are important. We have a purpose. And the things that we do are special, and no one else does things quite like what we do. And my inspiration is is to make sure that our community never forgets that. Um, because I believe once we lose sight of who we truly are, what's the point of saying that we're Cherokee if we're not any different than anyone else? You know, And that doesn't mean we have to be better or less than anyone else. But as long as we carry out who we are, we'll be special. And I think that's my biggest motivation when it comes to making songs in Cherokee is I want to get the language out there. I want to get the culture out there. I want to tell people's stories through music. Yeah. You got your start singing at the Creek. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. And stomp dances. That? Yeah. Yeah. I, I grew up at a stomp grounds and I, you know, I would follow in line and I'd sing backup songs for, he was the leading, leaders. He was leading his first song by the time he was four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I started leading, you know, pretty young. And uh, I, they always had music on the radio. And, and it was anything, you know. It could be Beyonce to Hank Williams. And, uh, you know, I just, I just loved music. I just always grew up around it. And I would, you know, I would just unintentionally practice singing all the time. I would just sing uh, no matter where I was and no matter what was going on, you know, I was just singing. I couldn't help it. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you're doing great with your music. You're you're really pursuing it now and you yeah. were on an album. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to talk about that album? Yeah, I was on uh, the Undone Elise album, The Performers, and that was put on by Jeremy Charles and Fire Thief and you know, I'm really grateful of those guys. They uh, they really got me going because I don't think I would have taken music as seriously as I did without them pushing me to be a part of that. So I'm that, really grateful. That album, for those uh, Cherokee <clears throat> people out there watching that maybe haven't heard of it before, it's a great uh, it's a great thing to know about. Can yeah. you talk about you know kind of what's on the album? Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, there's multiple genres. Um, you know, anything from metal to pop to country, and it's all in Cherokee. And um, it was an album created to get the language out, um, which is, like I was saying, the, what I believe. It's kind of my goal in life. And so, you know, being a, up there performing with other musicians and being part of an all Cherokee album with other Cherokees singing all in Cherokee, um, you know, it was it was life changing, genuinely, you know. It's uh it's important. Yeah. It's an important thing. Yeah. Well, I think we're out of time, but I really appreciate you both being here and I am so thrilled for you all to get to listen to Agala Sieg's music. You go by the Chooge. Yeah, the Chooge. You go by the Chooge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Best of luck to you, although you do not need it, Agala Sieg. People are nuts about your music. They can't wait for more. I can't wait to hear more. Um, and so without further ado, 
we'll listen to the music of Agalasig Mackey. Sky do do Agalasig, that was awesome. I know you have a bright career in music ahead of you. And now we're going to welcome to the stage another Cherokee musician who's taking the Cherokee Nation by storm, Mr. Zebediah No Fire. <laughs> Hot the warrior 
Milwaukee Roots, yo, we cup or cold. Though we use Quia on a wony skull. I send play, got you out to dust to know. Suda Lake, all with Dooley skull. Hot the Wu, yo, Waggy Looch, yo, we cup or cold. I done at least, you go go say home. Gagwatla no hit though, the Unduli skull. I send hit and I get you, you'll say home. I send hit and I get you, you'll say home. I send hit and I get you, you'll say home. Chalaki, Chalaki, Chalakagi won't eat. Do Zebediah. We now welcome Miss Kaylin Faye Barnowski for her performance.
Wado to all of the performers uh, who came here to share their musical talents with us today. I hope you all enjoyed that as much as I did. Some of those performance performers are also part of a Cherokee language album called Anna Donaliski, and many of them will be performing at that live concert we talked about with Chief Hoskin earlier at Cherokee National Holiday this year. So be sure to stay tuned for more information and details that are going to be coming out about Holiday and that concert in the coming weeks. We'll now hear from District 2 Tribal Councilor Candessa Tihi, co-chair of the Culture Committee. Councilor Tihi. OCO, in our rich cultural tapestry, music holds a special place. One of my first memories of Cherokee music, aside from our ceremonial songs, is hearing my mother sing a Cherokee lullaby to my youngest brother, a song that she told me was passed down for generations before her. I sang that same lullaby to my own children and hope one day to sing it to my grandchildren. Through music, we have passed down our traditions and teachings from one generation to the next. We are here as living embodiments of that legacy. On this episode, we have witnessed the beautiful harmonies and melodies of citizens coming together to carry forward the rich legacy of Cherokee music. As co-chair of the Culture Committee, I am committed to ensuring our musical traditions continue to flourish. We must create safe spaces and opportunities for our musicians to showcase their talent, not just within our communities, but also on larger stages with wider audiences so non-Cherokee people can also experience the creative beauty inspired by our music. We can empower our musicians to reach new heights and create art that resonates with all music fans. And through their artistry, we can educate others about our unique culture and find common ground. So let us celebrate the power of music in our lives and honor those Cherokees that help keep this invaluable tradition alive. Wado. Wado, Counselor Teehee. That's going to do it for us today. Before we go, though, I would like to welcome back Ms. Mary Kay Henderson, director of the Cherokee National Youth Choir, to close out our show with an important message about music. OCO and Wado for watching our show today. As the director of the Cherokee National Youth Choir, I am honored to share the stage with so many talented Cherokee musicians who also embrace the rich history of Cherokee musical traditions. Music has always been a way for Cherokees to connect with our language, our history, and our culture. And for me, it's been a special way to connect to my family and my own Cherokee roots. Growing up in Muskogee, my family always had music in our home. My dad would listen to country music in the mornings, and my mother would play Eddie Arnold and Nat King Cole on the radio while we were cleaning the house. My mother had a beautiful alto voice, and I grew up singing along and harmonizing with her. So music has always been a major part of my life. Since 2003, it's been my honor to serve as director of the Cherokee National Youth Choir. We are ambassadors for the Cherokee Nation, sharing our culture and our language everywhere we go. We've been in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade twice performed on PBS and have also won six Native American Music Awards. And we also received a $10,000 grant from a collaboration between the Grammy Foundation and Foreigner for a PSA featuring I Want to Know What Love Is in Cherokee. I'm proud to be a part of this, to watch young people learn about our history and culture through musical traditions. Chief Hoskin and Deputy Chief Warner have made significant investments in Cherokee language perpetuation and in our culture, including our musical traditions. These investments impact our communities and the next generation. And we saw that today with our young people playing music and singing in Cherokee. The solid foundation that we lay today will ensure a stronger tomorrow. With that, I thank you for tuning in and enjoying the performances that you heard today. Wado.
Joo, tää kohan ei, ne kaataa ne jäviä. <tos>